everybody, this is meteorologist Andrew Panero with finally part three of my stage two tune and install. So in this, we're really gonna talk about the history of tuning, why tune, why would anybody wanna do this and intentionally mess with their car? So we're gonna talk about the history and then we're gonna talk a little bit about the evolution of different parts of the car controlling tuning and then we're gonna talk about why I would wanna tune my car. So. Let's get right to it. Ever since we had cars, car owners have been trying to make them faster. Manufacturers have been trying to make cars more reliable. This is where tuning comes in. Tuning has been around as long as cars have been around. With early carbureted engines, tuning a car was kind of like tuning a musical instrument. The adjustment knobs on the carb adjusted the air fuel mix that was going into the carburetor. If it sounded right and you would just listen to that, you did a good job tuning. If the tuning was wrong, you would start to hear a pinging sound, also known as detonation, which is very bad. This is where the phrase tune-up comes from. A mechanic would check to see if the carb was tuned right as well as checking to see other parts to make sure they're right that affect the tuning and timing of the valves in the engine. In the late 70s and the early 80s, something drastic happened called the oil crisis. During this time, manufacturers were intentionally tuning down engines to try and squeeze out as many miles per gallon as possible. A little fun fact, manufacturers actually put plugs on those adjustment knobs on the carburetor so you couldn't change the tuning yourself. The next evolution in fuel efficiency was the ECU, also known as the engine control unit. This, control, this took control completely out of the hands of the car owner for a little while. Some neat things with the ECU were uh, computer-controlled variable valve timing, computer-controlled ignition timing, and soon, with the use of the ECU, manufacturers started to use something called EFI, or electronic fuel injection. The fuel injectors would spray a mist of fuel at a precise moment controlled by the ECU. The computer nerds of the 80s actually started to work with the gearheads as well. This system is still in use today with all these cars. Cars started to be equipped with also what feels like hundreds of sensors. All of these sensors from all over the car get fed into the ECU. This is how the ECU can determine air fuel ratios, timings, and with automatic transmissions, the shift points. In order to control the ECU, manufacturers started to put in diagnostics ports into the cars. In the beginning, these were proprietary ports per manufacturer, which made things very difficult for the tuners. President Bill Clinton in the 1990s created a new emissions law that governed uh, the government would regulate the emissions of all cars on the road. This brought on the advent of the OBD2 port. This was a universal port. From the 1996 model year and newer, every car has this OBD2 port. This port allows you to monitor and modify the car's computer to optimize engine performance by changing different variables that it could use to calculate different aspects of the engine. This allows the tuners that we know of now to fudge some numbers in order to get the most power out of a wide power band. If you are not careful, this could cause some issues. If you don't know what you're doing, you can really mess things up with your engine. Those that do know what they're doing, do it really well. You're not also gaining 50 plus horsepower from just a tune. You also need to change out some parts. Once you change out these parts, the engine essentially needs to be recalibrated. That recalibration process is what we know of as tuning. This brings up where I find myself right now. I used a reputable engine performance company called MA Performance. They are a group of very passionate men and women that look to squeeze out as much power and performance out of cars safely. They are experts at this. 
the aftermarket parts that they build and install on their test cars. They then develop their own tunes with an in-house master tuner. These specially made tunes they provide with all of their kits. The Stage 2 kit that I installed on my car came with their special Stage 2 tune, which was again specifically designed for the parts that I put in there. So the next question you might think of is, why go through all of this trouble as the consumer? Because I love to tinker with cars and get the most performance out of them as possible. Because driving down the road, giving it a little gas, and feeling that surge of power is just awesome and really fun. Because as a community, we love our cars. That's why we try and get the most performance out of them because we love it. So that's why we tune. That's the history, pretty much very condensed version of the tuning history. Why I wanted to put a stage two t uh, kit on my car. So I really hope you enjoyed. I do apologize again. It was very long until I was able to get part three out for this whole stage two tune and install. So I hope you enjoyed this Full Throttle Thursday. I got a lot of neat things in store for Full Throttle Thursday. So if you want, hit that subscribe button below and that little bell icon right next to that so you get notified whenever I upload a video or I go live sometimes. Again, I hope you enjoyed. This is meteorologist Andrew Panero. Thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next video.